Mark, you looking good. You're doing well, man. The house life, man. You looking good there, Mark. Man, God is good. God is good. Talk as loud as you want because I ain't working off no microphone. You, know, right, you know, you know my shit. You know, Mark, uh, what's been going on lately, man? Tell the folks what's going on, man. Well, um, we're at a unique point in history again where God has given the black community so much power. Uh, so much power than it's ever had before. And somehow, uh, a lot of our people, leadership, and more importantly, the masses of our people, have seemed to forgot. It's what our Reverend Al Sharpton once called Negro amnesia. Uh, that we've seemed to have forgotten uh, how to use the power that God has given us to get what we want. And so here we are today with so much violence going on in our community. And so after 40 years of this movement, uh, I've come to the conclusion that, that the new phrase in our community is economic violence. Uh, because one, God has given us uh, the economic power to turn our communities around tomorrow if the people who complain about the violence would ask themselves, what are they doing to fight the economic violence that black people commit against themselves on an everyday basis? Because you ask yourself, we need that black Wall Street spirit of saying, how do we use our common sense and our common resources that we've got every day? Don't matter if you're Christian or Muslim, but just go back to that spirit that Dr. King had when he met with Honorable Elijah Muhammad when they both decided then, to our people, that it don't make no difference if you're Christian or Muslim. They were both talking the same talk, that black people should use more of the consumer dollars that they have within their own community financial institutions to do what? Create, sustain, and increase your own jobs in your own community. And that would turn away the need for far too many of our people to be looking to the gang, drug, and other illegally street economies to make a living when we, the people, got the own economic resources to turn our communities around tomorrow. So the key is, if you want to stop the physical violence, ask yourself what you're doing for yourself to stop the economic violence that leads to so much of the physical violence. Because I just say this, that when you go to the criminal justice system, you ask yourself, sister, why are you there from prostituting? Well, they were, sister was trying to solve an economic problem. Brother, why were you there still in those times? Trying to solve an economic problem. Brother, why were you there? You go down to child support court and watch all the frustration between these couples. Why are you there? Because you've got a problem with economics of people paying the child support. So 90% of all of our people who make up the criminal justice system, why are they there, friends? They were there doing something illegal, trying to do what? Solve the economic problem. And so when God has given you, on the one hand, a trillion dollar consumer spending power, you can't brag about that on the one hand and then turn around and steadily whining and, 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 and bit, well, not bitching, well, complaining about what you don't have when God has already answered your prayers by putting that kind of money in the hands of black people to turn his communities around tomorrow. And that's the spirit of Black Wall Street, to do what we did before, using what we got to get what we want. Uh, Mark Allen, we're taping this in early, I don't even know, what's the date, the 9th of September? I think yeah. later this month. Is Reverend Al coming this month? Reverend Al, is gone. Reverend Al Sharpton and mm -hmm. Martin Luther King III are are uh, moving to Chicago sometime before the uh, end of September. Okay, I know sometime this month. Now, I may get over there. They're going to probably be on the west side somewhere. I got to go over to the west side. Or, or maybe, maybe they have apartments on the south and west sides. Who knows? But are they going to come in this town? They're going to say they're going to try to stop the crime. But to the stop the crime, you just eloquently put the, all the solution out for the folks. It's an economic problem. It's an economic solution. Well, Reverend Nile and Dr. Martin Clinton, I mean, Martin King III, will they come in to present some economic solutions or are they going to present some political solutions? Well, here's what it is. I'm glad you asked. What happens is, is that Reverend Sharpton, Martin Luther King III, and I say this to them, and I have, and I'll say this to all of people who are in leadership, whether you are a noted black leader or whether you're just at the grassroots level. The question of the day is economics. Andy Young and others said what Dr. King said. The best way 
to preserve a political movement is to sustain the economic movement that can promote the political movement. And so it doesn't matter if you have a political agenda. How do you pay the organizers? How do you sustain the office? How do you pay for the materials? How do you do the ad campaigns? You can't have a political movement unless you start with an economic movement. And I heard Mr. Farrakhan say some years ago, politics without economics is symbol without substance. So whether it's Reverend Sharpton, whether it's Martin Luther King III, whether it's Reverend Jack, whoever it is, even at the grassroots level, though for those people who say we are the leaders we've been looking for, same thing go for you too, even at the block club level. What are you doing with the economics that you control every day? And so I'm saying to Martin Luther King III and others, now is the time to honor Dr. King's last program on earth. And so the name of the speech wasn't even I Have a Dream. It was a call for economic justice. And Dr. King's Poor People's Campaign told blacks and poor people two things. Whether you got another public policy one or not, if you just go back to the communities where you are, black and poor people, Dr. King said, use more of the bread. And back then we called money bread. And he called our community the basket, which is how he came up with the name bread basket. And so Dr. King even said, with all the things that they won politically, in terms of Voting Rights Act, Public Accommodations Bill, and other legislation, the, the, the difficult part of it was the economics of controlling that political movement. And so again, I say, for those who want to honor Dr. King, honor him doing those two things that he said 50 years ago. And that were two things, black and poor people. Use more of the consumer dollars that you spend every day in your own community financial institutions so that you can create, sustain, and increase your own community businesses and jobs. And then the second thing Dr. King said was to black and poor people, do not support and protest those major corporations who would dare exist in majority black and poor communities that did not have economic benefits agreement with those uh, contractors and service providers in those communities. And if black and poor people would do those two things that Dr. King left here, it ain't got nothing to do with the personality who led it. It has nothing to do with the messenger who led it. It has to do with the message. And so 50 years later, with these desperate economic conditions, just honoring those two principles of Dr. King's last movement would turn our communities around tomorrow. So if Reverend Al, if Martin Luther King III, or whoever, this is not, a, this is not so much about the major personalities who couldn't use their visibility as national leaders, and with the visibility that, that Reverend Sharpton now has as one, no one but Reverend Sharpton right now is on national and international radio to the degree that he is. Uh, no one has the access to the uh, cable news network and, and that, that he has right now. But when you combine that collective agenda, and we were talking to Congressman Danny Davis right here in this uh, very office, saying the same thing. It's now time for a poor people's economic revival that will turn our communities around tomorrow, whether you're on uh, a noted level, or even at the grassroots level where the ordinary people are. Yeah, but you, you, we got to get practical. What you just said is brilliant, Mark. But we have to get practical. Whether we make, you know, two, two hundred grand a year or $10,000 a year, we got to get practical how we spend our money, whether we at a bank, a uh, financial institution, or we just work out the currency exchange or the payday loan. We make everybody rich with our little pennies, nickels, and dimes. How do you tell, how can you tell, what can you say to the average person say, listen here, you make $200 a week, you make $5 a week. How do you take some of that money to, to make, to, a, to use for economic development in your own neighborhood? Well, one of the things we can do is we can put, to some degree, in theory, currency exchanges out of business. Yeah. For instance, currency exchanges and payday loan stores would not even exist in black and poor communities if every place where you find a payday loan store or a currency exchange, if those were extensions of one of our black financial institutions who we can have our own credit unions in every one of those sites. 
Black people can own those sites because we're proving by the power that and, 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 and the economics of currency change and payday loan, it's clear. Black people and poor people are still moving money. Right. It's just not being moved within our own controlled institutions. So I'm just simply saying, for every place there's a currency change, there could very well be a division of one of our black and community banks. For every place that has these payday loans that prey on people, we still have the capacity for churches to own those payday loan stores for our own financial institutions and for what you're now beginning to see a lot of our black community development organizations are getting certified as financial lending institutions where we can now be in the process of lending and loaning our own money and don't have a need for the payday lenders as we know them. And so clearly it's all an economic problem and we have the economic solution, but everybody has to start asking themselves, how can I use the money we spend every day how do everybody who march against violence and they text and tweet all day long about violence, you got to start looking yourself in the mirror and ask, what am I doing? Because you're either spending your money in a way that helps employ the very people that you don't want to be committing violence, or you're spending your money in a way that you help contribute to the very problem that you say you're fighting against. And so that's why we here at Black Wall Street through our Reverend Willie Barrow Consumer Education Project, I'm gonna answer the question. When people keep asking, what can I do? We'll say, I'm glad you asked. And here's the formula and the model that we use. And again, we're trying to promote the action and not a personality because that's what leads to most of our problem. Most black people and poor people don't support the doggone agenda because you're too busy arguing over the personality of the messenger. And we got to get back on message.